A couple of years ago I made a video about VHD. This was a home video disc format that was only on the market in Japan from 1983 until 1990. In 1980s Japan, the most popular pre-recorded home video format was Laserdisc, with VHD following in second place, although VHD captured more of the karaoke market. VHD would likely have never made it to the market at all if it hadn't been for a £20 million investment in the technology from the UK, and it's this UK connection that I'm going to be focusing on in this first of two videos about VHD's life outside of Japan. Because while VHD was never launched to the public in the UK or the US, over the last couple of years I've been able to acquire a few rare or unique artefacts from that brief period in the early 80s when VHD was almost launched in the West, only for the plug to be pulled at the very last minute. The UK connection comes courtesy of Thorn EMI. They planned to launch VHD in the UK in June 1982, Thorn EMI at this point in history was a massive powerhouse of a company. It employed over 90,000 people worldwide and had fingers in more pies than most people could imagine. I doubt there was anyone living in the UK in the 1980s that didn't interact with the company in some capacity, whether they were aware of it or not. Most people were aware of the name. You didn't necessarily go out and buy something with a Thorn EMI badge on it, although there were products like that. However, if you did buy a electricity refrigerator or a Bendix washing machine or a Kenwood mixer, you are also buying from Thorn EMI. But of much more relevance to this video was their reach within the area of entertainment. They owned pubs and restaurants, the name Angus Steakhouse will be familiar to many. They even owned the Blackpool Tower Complex. They also had a 50% share in Thames TV and they made movies that they could show in their own chain of cinemas. And of course, there was the massive EMI music arm of the company. They owned the HMV retail stores as well as the Rumbelow's electrical chain and absolutely dominated the TV rental business in the UK through their DER, Radio Rentals, multi-broadcast, focus and electricity board chains of rental shops. They also stocked all these stores with their own electricals that were sold under the Ferguson brand. And it's here where this all comes together in this story about VHD. You see, when Thorn EMI decided to go with the JVC VHS system in all their outlets, this is what made VHS the de facto standard for home video cassette recorders in the UK. Their Ferguson Video Star was a massive success, and it was the first video recorder that many people here had the option to rent. So Thorn EMI decided what you watched and how you were going to watch it, and also rent or sold you the means to do it. So when JVC demonstrated an early version of their VHD system in 1979, Thorn EMI were happy to help them bring it to market, believing that this would be their next big success following after JVC's VHS system. Now the last line here on this page is very important because when Thorne signed up to VHD it was a video and an audio format, two in one. The audio side of it later gained its own moniker of AHD for audio high density as opposed to the VHD video high density. This was at the point when the Philips Laserdisc system had just been launched in the US and was due to come to the UK soon. However, this system was analog video and analog audio. AHD was going to consist of a separate decoder box that attached to the VHD players, which would then enable PCM audio, digital audio, with still pictures displayed on the TV screen. Remember, this is before CD, so this was EMI's way to get in at the ground floor on a new audio format, as well as a new video format, for them to put their catalogue of music and movies on. And they'd also make the machines themselves here in the UK using their factories. Now, AHD was one of three technologies competing for the approval of a 29-company council who were going to agree on the standard for the new digital disc format. Telefunken, who were in severe financial difficulty at this point, surprised everyone by resurrecting their TED video disc format from the early 1970s and adapting it to play digital audio. That one was really a non-starter. JVC, on the other hand, showed their AHD capacitance system, and that was a lot more promising, but you have to bear in mind that the discs for the AHD system were 10 and a half inches across, just like the video discs. The third option for a disc came from Philips. It was a small silver disc that was optically read by a laser. And once Sony joined up with Philips, it was all over for the competition. 
Pretty much everyone agreed straight away that the Sony and Philips disc was by far and away the best option. The standardization committee chose to back this format and everyone switched over to the CD, even Thord EMI. Well, almost everyone, JVC, still thought that AHD had its merits. Now, while Thorn EMI had given up on AHD, the audio system, they were still committed to the video one, VHD, and their £20 million investment into the project took JVC's late 1970s design from a barely functional prototype that played discs without a caddy to this 1980s version that looks a lot more like the finished product. So everything was ready to go. Demonstrations of VHD were given to the press, a new disc pressing plant was being built in Swindon, and a launch date was set for June 1982. But there was a problem. Philips had been the canary in the coal mine for video discs. Their product had already launched in the UK and was doing miserably. Nobody was interested. Things didn't look any better for Laserdisc or DiscoVision or whatever they were calling it this week in the US either. And even RCA's lower price system that had launched in 1981 was selling at much smaller quantities than anticipated. All these systems had been conceived before the dawn of the home video recorder boom, and video recorders had come along and ate their lunch. Few people wanted a video disc player and a video recorder, and when it came to a choice between buying something that could record television and play pre-recorded movies, or just play pre-recorded movies, for most people the decision was an easy one to make. Now, After seeing the poor sales of the rival formats, Thorn EMI did the wise thing, and as they put it in this shareholder documentation, they defer any final commitment to enter the video disc market at the present time. Yeah, they put the whole thing on hold and wrote off their £20 million investment in their next year's accounts. As you can see from their 1980 turnover chart, it wouldn't have made barely a dent in the figures. Compare this to RCA's decision in the US to stick with their CED system, it's believed they ended up losing upwards of $600 million on this project. Thorn EMI did eventually release a VHD video disc player in the UK, but only after repositioning it as an interactive video system that was aimed at business markets. Now, I don't know if this ever recouped them their initial investment in VHD, as its most successful application was in a video jukebox system. So that's the end of the VHD story in the UK, but going back to those 1981 demonstrations to the press, I couldn't help but wonder what happened to the demo disc they were showing there. After all, this chap, he's got a television. He's definitely showing something to the press that's playing off the format. They've even got as far as showing some box art for movie releases. I can make out the Deer Hunter, Convoy, the land that time forgot is there on the left as well. So I wonder what happened to those UK discs after the project got cancelled. Well, I can tell you the fate of some of them. 37 years later, they ended up on eBay and I bought them, so I can show you them here today. Now, I believe these were part of a house clearance. The person selling them didn't have any connection to them, but it's clear from looking at them that they are some of the discs that were used in the early demonstrations in 1981 or 82 in the UK. This disc in particular would have been one that you'd hand to people, perhaps at a show, to say, here's what the disc looks like on the inside, because that's one in a clear case that can't be inserted into the machine. But this one can, but you can see it's not for sale. Now, Olivia Newton John Physical was an album that came out in 1981. It was one of those albums where they did a video for each track, and it did eventually make its way out to VHD in Japan as an official release. So that one isn't particularly interesting. We know what's going to be on there. But this one, Demo Disc, this looked a lot more at my street. I saw a picture of this on the eBay auction. I thought, I've got to get that. April 1982 demonstration disc, all in English. So that's before the product was supposed to be launched in June 1982. Looking down here, we can see it's very UK-oriented. We've got Daily Thompson on here and the River Thames and all sorts of things, various demonstrations of the format that you could have shown perhaps at a trade show just to demonstrate how it all worked. And it's in PAL or CCAM and it says copyright 1982 from Thorn EMI. So I was really looking forward to playing this disc, but unfortunately the disc isn't in there. It's still inside a machine somewhere. I was absolutely gutted when I found it out because this disc is probably unique and it would have been very interesting to watch. But hey, you can't win them all. But here's what was on the disc. As you can see, you could make out what the things would have been. So it perhaps wouldn't have been as interesting as I was imagining, but it's still a shame that I'll never get to see it. 
Fortunately though, the next caddy does contain a disc. This is all about the interactive features of VHD. This was an area where it had an advantage over Laserdisc because you could have a 60 minute side of interactive content as opposed to 30 minutes on a CAV Laserdisc. You can see at the bottom of here, there's a bit of information I wasn't aware of before. White line in window indicates side two. That's referring to this tiny little window on the other side. If you see a white line in it, that's side two. I didn't know that. I've got other VHDs and was never aware that that was a feature you can see on this disc here no white line in the center of there flip it over white line so clearly that is side b and of course that would let you know whether you'd put the disc back in the caddy the wrong way around now at this point the swindon plant hadn't yet come online so these were being manufactured in japan the victor company of japan of course being jvc now these weren't mass produced discs, they might have only made a couple of them, or perhaps they were one-offs. You can see a handwritten note that's been photocopied in here. It says what's on each side and whether or not it's okay. The reason this would have been included is because they were having difficulties making VHD discs in Japan at this point. Early in the production process there were various issues that were going wrong, and as a result it ended up putting the launch back. They intended to launch the VHD system just a month after Laserdisc had arrived in Japan in October 1981. But because of the production problems, they ended up having to postpone it until April 1982. But then all this stuff happened in the West, where the US and the UK pulled out of VHD, and it ended up finally getting launched in Japan on the 21st of April 1983. Now, a week or so after I bought these discs, another set turned up from the same seller on eBay, so I bought those as well. Now, these included yet another copy of Physical that I really am not interested in, but it was the other two discs that caught my eye this time, We've got Convoy here. Now, if you remember, that was one of those titles that was shown at that demonstration of VHD back in 1981. So that is particularly interesting to me because I might have the only movie in a PAL format on VHD known to exist. But I've also got another one, Arab-esque, or at least I thought I'd got another one. I assumed this to be the Gregory Peck and Sophia Loren picture. So I was a little bit surprised and disappointed to find that the Arab-esque on this disc, well, that isn't a movie, it's a pop group from Germany. And they were particularly popular in Japan, which explains their appearance on this demo disc. The flip side of the disc contains music videos from the Japanese group, the Yellow Magic Orchestra. You may not be familiar with the name, but they're a very influential pioneer of electronic music. I'm quite sure you'll recognize this, but perhaps not from the Yellow Magic Orchestra because it was reused by Jennifer Lopez as the hook for the song, I'm Real. But getting back to the matter in hand, there are two discs here that I'm particularly interested in looking at, but we'll start with the one on the left, which is the demonstration of the interactive capabilities of VHD. So now sit back and enjoy a selection of edited highlights from this disc. It can get a little bit dry and slow in places, but I found the whole thing quite fascinating. By connecting the VHD system with a home computer, its potential as the information system of the future is greatly expanded. The addition of a computer to its quality audio and video opens up a new dimension for the VHD video disc system. This disc is all about interactivity and the reason they're going into this in such great detail is because it's the one area in which they believe the VHD system had an advantage over the rival Laserdisc. Laserdisc generally came in two standards, both playable on the same machine, but there were CLV, constant linear velocity, and CAV, constant angular velocity. The difference between the two was the CLV was really just a big long piece of video per side which held 60 minutes on each side of the disc. The CAV standard was 30 minutes per side, so half as much, but that enabled you to have a level of interactivity that you couldn't get on the CLV disc. You could access individual frames of the video, you could do time searches, you could do chapter searches, all that kind of stuff. All the things you could do on VHD, but VHD allowed it on the 60 minute disc. So this was the advantage, 60 minutes on a VHD with interactivity or 30 minutes on a laser disc with interactivity. The disadvantage though was that VHD held two frames of video per rotation so you couldn't get a perfect freeze frame because it alternated between those two images. In addition to these special features, another VHD merit is that the video disc can be manufactured at low cost. Because the manufacturing process is similar to the conventional audio record, it can be pressed in volume at low cost. 
As the principle and mechanics of the VHD player is simple, the price of the player itself is also low. The size of the pickup sensor is only six microns, less than one-tenth the size of the human hair. And the force load applied on the disc is only 75 milligrams, and it barely touches the disc surface. Therefore, long life can be expected. The VHD system is compatible with the world's three broadcasting systems, PAL, CCAM, and NTSC. Discs of any of these three systems can be played back, resulting in the realization of worldwide compatibility. That's something we really missed out on, having worldwide video compatibility in the early 1980s. I mean, it would probably be almost 20 years before that became standard where you could put any disc in any player from any country and it should display properly on the screen. You might recognise some of the clips out of this video as ones that I've used on a previous video. Once I'd captured it a few months ago, I took some of the clips and put them together in a comedy sketch about somebody trying to sell an Android via Kickstarter. It was just there was so much of this brilliant early 1980s aesthetic of computers with CRTs and things. I just couldn't help but put it together into something that was a little bit more fun. I really feel for this model that they've shipped over from the UK to Japan. Now remember, this is the early 1980s, she's in Japan, she looks like she's in her teens, and no doubt thoroughly bemused by the whole process of all these Japanese people telling her to sit in front of this, press that button, look like you know what you're doing. So they've said, here, type something on here to show it can superimpose on the screen. So she's written, you can superimpose, two separate words, to the video screen like this. I love VHD system. I mean, what else would you type? It's the early 1980s. She's probably never sat in front of a computer before. It's like printing 10 print Hello World 20 go to 10. You'll see her appear throughout the rest of the video. And at times she looks like she's on the verge of breaking into giggles. I'd imagine she had quite a bit of fun back then. Now, this is a long time ago. This lady will be into her mid fifties now if she's still around. I wish she was able to watch this because I bet she never got to see it back in the day when she shot it over in Japan. But the chance of a mid fifties woman watching anything on this channel is pretty slim. Now, moving on to other applications they were showing for the VHD system in Japan. This one is a child's video arcade system where you could choose from six videos by pressing the appropriate button on the front and then listen back to them through this telephone receiver handle set but just one person at a time please in this scene the vhd system is being used to play a video back in slow motion to show these children in a gym class how to properly vault over a box and here one of the sales assistants has now lost their job thanks to the installation of a vhd system which is able to pick your perfect trainers the perfect shoes for you are the asics tiger alti 500 after the system selects your shoes, the computer prints out the detailed product data. Entertainment. The very popular VHD Songmaster system is now becoming indispensable as an entertainment media in homes, drinking establishments, and pub restaurants. Karaoke appears to have been a big draw towards the VHD system because as mentioned earlier on, you could hold 60 minutes of video per side of disc as opposed to 30 on a laser disc that had the same level of interactivity. And you needed that interactivity to be able to pick the individual songs. So whether you were at home or in a bar, it's more than likely if there was some video karaoke system, it would be using a VHD disc inside it because there'd be a greater variety of tracks to pick from. One of the most interesting features about VHD was how it could be attached up to a computer, which could then control the disc and overlay information on the screen. It did this by attaching to the AHD port at the back, the one that was originally intended for those external PCM decoders. But these could be attached up to MSX computers, and according to the MSX Resource Center, they've got a nice list of the games that came out that were compatible with this system. As you can see, there aren't many here, but there's one in the middle there that was unreleased, Highway Star. But thanks to this disc, we get to have a brief look at this game. By interfacing with a home computer, the VHD system can be used as a home video game machine with real pictures and sound instead of just computer graphics. In this racing game, a sensor is tracing four different pictures on the disc according to commands from the joystick.
Unfortunately, that's all there was for that game. However, we do get to see another game, the one at the top of this list, Birdie Try. This is a video disc golf game. Now, the first time I uploaded this section, the background audio got a content match, so I've replaced some of it with a tune that I think will be okay. This course is 320 meters with par four. Now you're ready to play. A west wind is blowing on this course. If you don't calculate the wind factor, you might get a wild shot. He's chosen a number one wood. The direction and distance is input on the keyboard. Now the first shot. Well, the ball went in the water. The computer display shows there is 165 meters to the cup. The computer adds one stroke as a penalty for hitting the ball in the water. Please select the third shot. He has selected a four iron. And in the same manner, selected the direction. And now distance. Well, how do you like it? The video disc game adds a totally new dimension to home video games. Information. Now this installation of VHD at the Information Centre at the Volcano Museum doesn't make too much sense because you go up to the information counter looking for information, instead they hand you a remote control and a piece of laminated card and say type it in yourself and have a look at the screens behind us. So they're all sitting there doing next to nothing while you're doing all the work typing it on this remote control so you can then watch a video that's playing on the screens behind the ladies at the counter. I mean, they could have just given you that information, they could have pressed the buttons themselves, or perhaps there was even just a handout that you could have had. So yeah, they're kind of forcing VHD in here into a position where it doesn't really seem to make too much sense, but it's a little bit like a sponsored exhibit, I think. Just like AT&T sponsoring Spaceship Earth at Epcot back in the day. Definitely more of a promotional thing for VHD rather than something that looks truly useful. I wonder how many years they carried on using it for. This next one's fascinating though, it's more of a paleo future type thing. Nowadays we're all used to the idea of booking things remotely. For example, a holiday, you'd go online, you might click on photos of the destination, perhaps even a video, before finally paying for it. Well, try doing all of that, but with early 1980s technology. <laughs> By combining the information from the video disc and telephone with a computer, the Chesscom Telpost Information System is another new direction toward a new information service opened up by the VHD Interactive System. In this system, visual information of Hawaii's hotels is recorded onto the video disc. While the particular hotel's information is being played back, the user can pick up the telephone and the computer automatically connects it to the hotel. Hello? 
Yes, I'd like to book a reservation for your hotel. Yes. How much would it be for one night? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, could you send me some more information? Lovely. Okay. Thank you. If the customer needs more information, the hotel can send the information by facsimile. JVC never gave up on their AHD digital audio system of music combined with still images, and it did eventually make its way to market in the mid-1980s. This section of the video explains how it works. The AHD system, which pioneers the audio, visual, and computer age, is a new system with unlimited potential. The AHD is a digital disc utilizing the VHD system. As with the VHD system, a 10-inch diameter disc is enclosed in a cassette. It has a four-channel digital transmission route and provides two-channel digital high-fidelity sound as well as one hour of digital still pictures per side for a full two hours of stills on both sides. The main advantages of AHD are the superb quality of the digital sound and the digital visuals. This system will be largely used in office automation and streamlining in the publishing and other fields as a large volume information filing and data storage system. It will pave the way towards a revolutionary concept in the field of information to replace the conventional printed form. AHD, together with VHD, represents the new technology of JVC and is the undisputed leader in heralding the new age of audio video and computer applications. So that's all the most interesting sections taken off that disc. I was glad I was able to show it to you. Hopefully I don't hit any kind of content matches for that. The reason I'm not going to play any audio out of these two discs is because of that. Recently I got content match for four seconds in a video. So it seems like it's not possible to play any kind of audio out of things that might match with a database anymore at all. So you could just have to imagine what the audio from these two sounds like. I mean, I'm sure you could get hold of physical and arabesque on DVD or something if you really want. To. As far as the Yellow Magic Orchestra goes though, I believe their back catalogue is quite a lot harder to come by. If you wanted to get hold of a compilation of their videos, they do exist on DVD in Japan, but they haven't made it far outside there. And even those I think are out of print now as well, which is a bit of a shame because there's some great visuals in here. But let's move on and talk about movies or a movie in particular, that Convoy disc that I got. Now, up to this point, all the movies that I've seen on VHD I've bought from Japan, and whilst they do contain an English language soundtrack, they also contain subtitles in the Japanese language, and those are burnt onto the video file. You can't deselect them, they automatically appear because they're on the actual video itself. So I'll be interested to find out whether or not Convoy has those subtitles on it. But when I put this caddy into my machine, it got stuck. And I realized the reason was because it's got different notches at the end. And for some reason, those engage on something in the machine. It would not let go of the caddy and it wouldn't draw the disc inside the machine either. In the end, I managed to prize it all out but I'm going to have to put that disc inside another caddy that comes from Japan, which will fit inside my machine. You can see there are plastic pegs at the top here. I'll need to get the disc past those, and I don't want to scratch the disc, so I'm putting a bit of paper down on each side, which hopefully will mean that the disc will slide past those plastic pegs undamaged. I'm putting the disc into that empty caddy that I got with that demo that was supposed to be from the UK in there, and now I'm taking the disc out of the convoy caddy, sliding it into the Saigon caddy from Japan and now I can put the end back in that and hopefully this time it will now go inside my VHD player without causing a bit of a problem. It was about an hour before I could get the last one out so fingers crossed this is going to work. Right there we go it's took the disc inside and it started to play it so I'm watching it on the TV screen at this point and nothing's coming up on the screen at all and then the arm just goes back to the beginning and it stops. I thought well, what's this about? Does that mean there's nothing on the disc at all? 
But after a bit of head scratching, I figured it out. It's all down to this multi-standard compatibility. The machines have to be able to identify which region the particular disc has come from that's been inserted. And the way it does this is with the notches on the end of the caddy. The red and white ones from the UK, the black ones from Japan, and you can see they've got different kind of notches on there. So when you put a Japanese caddy into the machine, it pulls the disc in, but it also takes the end off the caddy and pushes it against the back of the machine. And when it goes up to the back of the machine, it pushes against these micro switches there's one on the left and two on the right and these are activated by these little pins which either go into a recess on the end of the caddy or don't as the case may be so after a bit of playing around i figured out that the switch on the left is the one that indicates to the machine which way up the disc is depending upon which way around this plastic piece is oriented it will either push in the micro switch or it won't do and of course that is either side a or side b all that seems to do is light up an indicator on the front of the machine. Now, as far as the video standard goes, those are the two switches on the right hand side. You can see on this black piece here, this is an NTSC end, so that would mean the switch on the right would not get pressed in, but the one on the left would. However, the white end piece below is the one from the PAL disc, and that's the opposite way round. The right hand switch is getting pressed in and the left hand one isn't. So PAL is the right switch, NTSC is the left one. So that explains what the problem was. When I put my PAL disc into an NTSC caddy and put that NTSC end piece on, when it went into the machine, it pressed the button to say this is an NTSC disc, which meant it spun it up to 900 revolutions per minute, but then it couldn't read a carrier signal on it and it gave up. By putting the PAL end piece onto the NTSC caddy, that will mean that when the disc goes inside the machine, it's now going to spin it at 750 revolutions per minute, and hopefully it will be able to see what's on the disc. So let's find out. Now to start with, I tried playing the video back through this broadcast monitor that should be able to handle pretty much any kind of video signal, but it couldn't handle this one. As you can see, the colors are way off. I suspect this might be because my VHD player is from Japan. It's from 1987, and by then, maybe they dropped some of the PAL playback support, so it's outputting a slightly strange video signal. Fortunately, though, when I played it through this television, it was better able to handle it. You can see there's quite a bit of jitter on the screen here. However, it is showing the correct colors this time, and yes, it is a PAL video without Japanese subtitles. Where are you going? State line. You going with them? Let's go. They can't catch us there. Let's go! Yeah! So that really was quite a find. I might have in my hands here the only PAL format VHD movie in existence. It might even have been one of the ones that was shown at this demonstration. As far as VHD to the public goes, it died before it happened, but they did reposition the product for business. And if you're interested in reading up on Thorn EMI's VHD interactive video system, someone has been kind enough to archive this as a website containing all the promotional information from the early 80s. And if you're old enough, you may even have seen one of these systems in action as an interactive video demonstration used in Austin Rover showrooms. And then, of course, there was the video jukebox. Apparently, they went with the VHD system over the rival Laserdisc option as the Swindon plant could turn around a VHD disc in a week as opposed to a month for the Laserdisc plant in Blackburn. And a month is a lifetime when it comes to playing the latest pop videos. By the time a new Laserdisc had arrived, a song could have been a new entry, a chart hit, and already be exiting the chart before anyone got the chance to see the video. But that's the end of this video charting the story of VHD in the UK, the format that was so close to coming out that you can touch it. But that's not the end of VHD as far as I'm concerned, because we've still got the US story to tell. This is a product that very nearly came out there as well, and as a result, it left behind some remnants of its existence that I can show you in the next video. I'll also play you a little bit out of this Japanese promotional VHD, just to see what we could have had, and I might even crack open this VHD demo disc, just to see if there really is anything recorded on there. But that's all for next time. For the moment, as always, Thanks for watching.